And we're going to actually go through it pretty quick this morning, but if you would, turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, and we'll start this morning. Verses 1 to 5. Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. You know, as we look at this first part of Colossians, please be seated. As you look at this first part of Colossians, we know that as we're saved, as we accept Christ in our hearts, that we're supposed to get our thoughts out of the worldly things. We're supposed to get away from those things that that are signif that, that signify, that are synonymous with the things of this world. Yeah. You see, we're not of this world any longer when we accept Christ. Right? We're not of this world. And we know that this world is Satan's domain. Yeah. And his only goal for us, no matter what he tries to make you think, how enticing he tries to make it sound, his only goal for us is death, destruction, yeah. and murder. Uh -huh. yeah. And he will use deception any way that he can. He will do whatever it takes to drag us down the wrong path. He will do whatever it takes to get us off the path God has chosen for us. And if you're looking back at all those worldly things, how can you walk forward? You see, if I'm walking forward, and I'm walking forward, if I'm always looking back at what I used to have, I'm going to fall down these steps trying to go forward. You see, God... God has a blue plan for us. He has a direction for us. He has a purpose for us as His children. And we've got to shove off that world thing that's behind us and go forward and go ahead. And our identity has changed. We're no longer people of the world. We are now children of God. We are children of the Most High. We need to act like it. And we need to look forward to it. You know, I, mean, I know there's no snakes here in Alaska. A lot of people praise God for that. Yes, sir. <laughs> there's no snakes here in Alaska. But if, if you lived outside of Alaska, if you've been down the lower 48, especially if you've been down in the Arizona area and some of those other desert areas, you know that, is, that a snake, as it grows to a, a certain point, its skin no longer fits. And it sheds that skin away. You can see whole lengths of snake skin and stuff down in areas where there are a lot of snakes. Uh -huh. It sheds that uppermost layer of skin. Different times, at different times through his entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're told we become Christian and we are transformed and made new. Uh -huh. The old self is put away. The new self emerges. We need to shed that skin and don't look back. We need to get rid of that stuff and not look at it any longer. Starting with verse 5 in Colossians, the next chapter, we're going to go through verse 17 this morning. But in verse 5 in Colossians, it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Yeah. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Uh -huh. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Mm -hmm. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all, and is in all. Amen. And as our hearts and minds are transformed, we must shed that old skin so that everyone can see Christ in us right. by how we live. Hallelujah. How we walk each and every day. Not 
Thursday Christmas time. But on the Monday, following the Monday, following the Monday, following the Monday Amen. after Christmas. Amen. See, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we react shows who is inside of each and every one of us. And if Christ is in us, we need to be acting like Christ. Uh -huh. We need to react like Christ. We need to love others unconditionally. Just as he loved us. Mm -hmm. Scripture says we are to continue to be renewed. See, it wasn't past tense. Look at that again. It says, <coughs> in verse 10, and we put on the new self, which is what? Being renewed. Uh, that is present tense. Mm -hmm. Being renewed. We can't just act once. Yeah. We have to constantly grow in Him. Yeah. Constantly being renewed. You know, Dad asked his son, what happens when an apple ripens? Why, the son said, it falls to the ground. And then what happens? The father asked. Well, if it continues to lie there, it rocks. Well, that's just the point, said the wise old father. Always stay green until you have much growing to do. When you're no longer green, you're just going to turn into a rotten apple. We have to constantly, constantly be renewed in the Spirit with the Lord. How do we do that? With the knowledge of Him. How do we get that knowledge? Through Bible study. Being in the Word. Not just carrying it around on Sunday morning. Right. We need to be on it on Monday night. We need to be in it on Tuesday. We need to be in it each and every day of the week. We do it through fellowship. Joining together as we are this morning. Joining together like we did last night. Spending time in the field. Spending time with brothers and sisters. That fellowship builds each one of us up. It builds us up. It helps to renew our spirit. Through prayer. Yeah. Spending time one-on-one -on -one with Him. With our men and me. And in worship. We cannot worship Him enough. He alone is worthy. Yes. Oh, right. so worship and prayer. Yeah. He yeah. alone is worthy. So we grow in the knowledge of Him. And we grow in the image of our Creator. Yeah. That means that we are to strive to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. We should be walking our lives, walking our days, with the goal of being more and more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in the image of the Creator, we have been blessed enough to be able to take on the name of Christian. If you've accepted Christ, Scripture says you are a Christian. Yes. We've taken on the name of Christ. He has shared His name with us. What a privilege, what a blessing. You need to live up to that name. Each and every day. And it says in verse 11, here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. There is, in the church of Jesus Christ, there is no discrimination. Lord, it doesn't matter who or what. It matters Him. Yeah, He is all about right. And the good news was told to the shepherds. This good news is for all the people. Christ came to save everyone. And for those of you that may not know Him, He wants to save you. He has a present for you this morning. And all you do is ask Him. If you've experienced and you get that funny feeling going on inside, that means Jesus is talking to you. It means that Holy Spirit is working in your heart. You need to follow that and accept that precious gift that He has given you this morning. Yeah. That He wants you to, to take.
take a hold of. We want you to unwrap under the tree. You just have to accept this. You don't have to give him anything in return to accept his Christ, to accept his love and his salvation. And then we move to verse 12 this morning. I told you we're moving kind of quick through all of this. I can preach three hours on any one of these topics. As I know you guys are probably good too. But I'm going to challenge you to do this. I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going through this pretty quick. In your quiet time, do like the bridge and dig into the scripture. Yeah. See what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. He's telling me a few things to say. There's a lot more in this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Read it. Just study. Verse 12. Because therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love. Yeah. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Perfect unity. Matt, he's telling us, let's put on those Christmas clothes. You accept him, he's given us the new self. The new virtues, the new me. And I gotta tell you, I needed a new me, because I was a, I wasn't a good me. It was a bad me out there. And Christ has changed my life. Yes. He gave me new clothes. It doesn't matter if I'm a jacket, a tie. I could be up here in a t-shirt and shorts. Yes. But he's changed who I am from the inside yes. out. Oh, Lord God. From the inside out. Yes. I have two clothes. I have two clothes. He says, put these clothes on. Put on these Christmas clothes. Christ was born so that you could change your clothes. Christmas Eve occurred in God's plan so that we can change our lives and give us Christmas clothes to put on. Thank you, Jesus. And this change in clothing affects more than just our outer selves. It talks about compassion. Compassion is a deep understanding of another's suffering and the desire to do something about it. Suffering with the things of this world. Yeah. Suffering in the darkness and the evil of Satan and his trip and his deception. Those that are doomed to eternity in hell, they need compassion. They need an awesome one to reach out to them. For who else is if we aren't? And we're going to share that good news with Christ Jesus. Share that good news in season and out of season. For the reason we have the hope that we have. Compassion. It says kindness. Kindness is being good to another person and concern for them. Humility. So all the clothes that we're put on now. Humility. Opposite of pride. I'm proud of my family. But I try to live my life in the service of God. Yeah. Opposite of humility is the opposite of pride. Not elevating yourself beyond anyone else. Did you catch that? Yeah. Did you catch that? Humility is not trying to elevate yourself above anyone else. Christ had came to serve the least of these. He washed the feet of the disciples. He talked to the Samaritan woman. Oh my gosh, he talked to the Samaritan woman at the well. Mm -hmm. The least of these. We are not to elevate ourselves above anyone. Gentleness is to consider it, be considered a kindly in disposition, to be amiable or friendly, to be tender with one another. Patience, this is one a lot of us struggle with sometimes, myself included. Patience, the ability to wait on others without showing or becoming annoyed or aggravated. Every one of these, every one of these pieces of clothing that he's given us, it says that we refer to others before ourselves. Yeah, man. To others. 
of course, a trait that Christ demonstrated in his life, and he also demonstrated in his death. Forgive one another just as Christ has forgiven you. Yeah. The scripture tells us, forgive one another. That means you forgive upon request. Uh -huh. And you forgive not just part of the way, not just the way that makes you feel better. You forgive completely, yeah. totally, 100%. Yeah. And then yeah. forget about it. Christ has forgiven me. He's forgotten more about me than I've forgotten about me. Because he has forgiven me completely because I asked him. And how can I? How can I walk around and not do the same for others? If they ask me to forgive me, sometimes even if they don't ask me for forgiveness, I just need to forgive them because Christ forgave me. And we can do all of this. We can do all of this because of one of these candles that we lit this morning. We can do all of this because of love.
Now, the term dwell, another present tense type of word here. It's not, don't let him just come and can't leave. It's just let it dwell in you. Let it be part of you. Let him live in you. He's given us these clothes. Let it change who we are from the inside out. And let it dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another. And we let it dwell in us again through our Bible study, through our prayer, through our fellowship, our worship, as we, we multiply the blessings He gives us, as we spend time with one another and we spend time with Him. The Word is intended to teach and rebuke one another in Christian love. And we're to praise Him. We're to praise Him. Yes. Thank Him. Yes. Let that peace that can only come from him dwell within us and to radiate from our life. And finally, he tells us in verse 17. This is one of those verses that I grabbed hold of when I was a young, young kid. And I tried to, to grab hold of it and just make it mine. Claim this scripture. Claim this promise. You haven't claimed any of it. Claim this promise here, verse 17, Colossians 3. It says this, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Amen. Give him thanks to God the Father for him. Amen. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yeah. And it says, whatever you do, do it so that I may be glorified. I don't go to work for work. I go to work for my God. Say it. I don't come to the church to preach for the body, for the congregation. I come to glorify God. Amen. I don't go to the gym and play volleyball or basketball or racquetball. I need another ball game. I don't go there just to go have fun and get my awesome body on. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do there. I don't go there for that. I go there so that in my life and how I treat others, how I relate to others. I glorify Him. Yeah. In all things we do, in word and in deed, we do it to glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. If we do it for the right reasons, we'll get the right results. You see, as we celebrate Christmas in 2013, Celebrate wearing the new clothes of Christ Jesus as his children. And as we go into this new year, 2014, hard to believe we're there already. As we go into this new year, let us strive to clothe ourselves in the same manner in which Christ Jesus intends for us. Amen. Let's live a life of peace, of love, of hope, of joy, of patience of humility, of kindness, of gentleness. The two greatest commandments of all is given to us in the greatest love story of all. The story of God's love for you and for me. And as we go forward, and as we celebrate today with our families, with our loved ones, let us go forward in a newness of life Recommitted to walking with him and allowing him to walk and be part of us. As we're changed, we put on these Christmas clothes. Yeah. It's changed us from the inside out to touch not only our lives, but the lives of those that we come into contact yeah. with. If they don't see Jesus in you, you need to go back and get back in his work. Amen. And you need to study and you need to live. God came for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish. Finish it for me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you so much this morning for all of the blessings you've so richly given us. And as we celebrate Christmas, Lord, may we put on these clothes that you give us. As we clothe ourselves with compassion and kindness.
kindness, and humility, and gentleness, and patience, and love, for me, everyone we come into contact with see these clothes. And may they see the, the countenance on our face. And may our face radiate like Moses' face when he came down to the mountain when he was in your presence. May they see you in us in whatever we do. Lord God, I thank you so much for all of your blessings. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of our honor, our glory, and our praise. Thank you. May you be glorified in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.